Hi, I'm Dr. Victoria Vetter. I'm a pediatric cardiologist, children's heart doctor, and the medical director of Youth Heart Watch at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, an affiliate of Project Adam. Our mission is to prevent sudden cardiac death in the community through prevention, education, research, and advocacy. Youth Heart Watch is a comprehensive program with many parts, but one simple, very important goal, to significantly reduce sudden cardiac arrest and death among children. We aim to make sure that every school in our region, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware, has automated external defibrillators, AEDs, and staff trained to use them and perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation, or CPR. We will help your school become heart safe by helping you create a sudden cardiac death prevention team and develop a cardiac emergency response plan, or SERP. We'll help you run drills and learn how to keep your programs and equipment up to date. At Youth Heart Watch, one of our most important goals is to raise awareness of sudden cardiac arrest and to increase prevention of sudden cardiac death in all areas where youth learn, play, and gather. In this video, I will provide some general information about sudden cardiac arrest, SCA, and sudden cardiac death, SCD. We will provide information on the chain of survival, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, and automated external defibrillators. We will now tell you about Youth Heart Watch at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and how you can make sure that the school or athletic event that your child attends is heart safe. Educational videos that will prepare you to perform CPR on an infant, child, and adult, use an AED, and respond to a choking incident are available on our Youth Heart Watch website. With a few moments of your time to review and act upon the important information provided on our website, you can be prepared for an emergency so you can make a difference and save a life. What is sudden cardiac arrest and sudden cardiac death? A sudden cardiac arrest, or SCA, occurs when the heart suddenly and unexpectedly stops beating, usually due to an electrical abnormality in the heart. The heart fibrillates or quivers, and blood flow with oxygen and nutrients essential to the body and brain stop. Without intervention, sudden cardiac death occurs. How can you recognize a sudden cardiac arrest? A person experiencing sudden cardiac arrest passes out and appears lifeless with rapid, abnormal, or no breathing, except for gasping or so-called agonal breathing. There may be shaking movements that can be mistaken for a seizure. The sudden cardiac arrest victim is unconscious, unresponsive, and needs immediate help. Are you okay? Go get an AED. Call 911. What should you do if you witness or suspect sudden cardiac arrest? The chain of survival describes the steps that you need to take to save a life of a victim of sudden cardiac arrest. First, recognition of cardiac arrest and activation of the emergency response system. Call 911. Second, start immediate cardiopulmonary resuscitation with an emphasis on chest compressions Next, rapid defibrillation with an automated external defibrillator to establish a normal heart rhythm. This is most effective when it's performed in the first few minutes of a cardiac arrest. Next, effective advanced life support by emergency medical services and other healthcare providers and integrated post-cardiac arrest care in the hospital and recovery care afterwards. An effective chain of survival can improve chances of survival and recovery for victims of sudden cardiac arrest. The critical skills in the chain of survival include CPR and AED use. If you find an individual who has collapsed, you should assess the scene to make sure it is safe and check for responsiveness. You should call 911 and get an AED if available. Know that time is essential and this requires a rapid response from everyone involved. Seconds count. If the sudden cardiac arrest is not witnessed and you are alone, provide CPR for two minutes before leaving to get the AED. Pulse and breathing check. For lay or bystander rescuers, pulse and breathing check is no longer recommended. For healthcare providers, check for breathing 
and a pulse. During CPR, a bystander assumes the function of the pumping heart by pushing hard and fast in the center of the chest over the lower half of the breastbone at 100 to 120 beats per minute at a depth of two inches. If the victim is a child or drowning victim, you should give two breaths and then start chest compressions. Follow 30 compressions by two rescue breaths and continue this sequence. Adults can usually receive compression-only or hands-only CPR without breaths unless they have drowned or had a respiratory cause of their arrest. AED stands for Automated External Defibrillator. This computerized device recognizes if someone has a rhythm that is not effective and can be reset or shocked to a normal rhythm. If you witness a person having a sudden cardiac arrest, assess the victim and get or send someone for an AED, which should be within a two minute turnaround time of the individual if possible. This means that schools may need more than one AED depending upon the campus size. Start CPR at 100 to 120 beats per minute, pushing hard and fast in the center of the chest. When the AED arrives, it should be opened and turned on, and the AED prompt should be followed. Tear open package and remove pads. The AED electrode pad should be attached to the individual. The AED contains a computer that can recognize if a rhythm is present that should be shocked, a so-called shockable rhythm. Allow the AED to assess the rhythm. Make sure that no one is touching the victim during the shock. Many of the AEDs will automatically shock when appropriate, but some AEDs will prompt the user to push the shock button. AEDs do not make mistakes and will not shock a person who does not need a shock. You can trust its advice on pushing the shock button. You should immediately continue CPR after an AED shock. AEDs have been used in a variety of settings, by school children, laypersons, paramedics, and in hospitals. Training is best, but not necessary, as the prompts are easy to follow. Just open the AED and turn it on. Continue performing CPR and following AED instructions until EMS arrives. What are the consequences of a sudden cardiac arrest? Without intervention with CPR, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, and AED, automated external defibrillator, the affected person will not survive and sudden cardiac death will occur. Every minute of delay following a sudden cardiac arrest decreases the chance of survival by 10%. CPR lengthens this time somewhat. After five to six minutes without intervention, the organs in the body begin to die, and by 10 minutes, there is very little chance of survival. Survival of sudden cardiac arrest is low, at only 10 to 12% in the United States, but this can increase significantly in a school with a Cardiac Emergency Response Plan, or SERP, and an AED. How common is sudden cardiac arrest? Sudden cardiac arrest is the third leading cause of death in the United States. Approximately 380,000 people die every year from out-of-hospital sudden cardiac arrest. That's one every 90 seconds across this country. Sudden cardiac arrest also affects many young children under 18 years of age, estimated up to 23,000 per year. It is the leading cause of death on school campuses, accounting for 75% of all young athlete-related deaths, often during exercise. Over half of the time, a sudden cardiac arrest is the first symptom of a cardiac abnormality. What are the causes of sudden cardiac arrest? Sudden cardiac arrest is caused by an abnormality in the heart, either in the heart's structure, function, or electrical system. The most common causes of sudden cardiac arrest in adults include heart failure from hypertension, high blood pressure, or a weak muscle, a cardiomyopathy. Additionally, sudden cardiac arrest can be caused by an abnormal heart rhythm during or after a heart attack, or a primary electrical abnormality that causes the heart to stop beating normally. A heart attack results from the blockage of a coronary artery damaging the heart muscle and resulting in chest pain and at times a sudden cardiac arrest. 
Ventricular fibrillation is often the electrical abnormality that occurs in association with a sudden cardiac arrest. In youth, conditions associated with sudden cardiac arrest are frequently inherited from a parent and are related to a genetic mutation. The most common causes in young people include those associated with an abnormal heart muscle, a cardiomyopathy such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, HCM, with a very thickened heart muscle, especially in the septum or wall between the two lower chambers, the ventricles or dilated cardiomyopathy, DCM, where the heart dilates and the walls become stretched and thin, or arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy, ARVC, where the right ventricular muscle is replaced by fat and scar tissue. Primary electrical conditions that involve an underlying problem in the heart and arrhythmia can be inherited and include long QT syndrome, shown here with a very long QT interval determined by the time the heart is activated, shown by the inscription of the QRS on the electrocardiogram, and the time that the heart is recharged, shown by the end of the T wave. This is usually related to a prolongation of the recharging of the heart. This makes the heart electrically unstable and can result in a cardiac arrest. Other inherited arrhythmia conditions illustrated here include Brugada syndrome with an unusual QRS and an elevated segment of the electrocardiogram called the ST segment. Inherited conditions not shown include short QT syndrome and CPVT, catecholaminergic polymorphic ventricular tachycardia, among others. Additional causes of cardiac arrest that are not inherited include the WPW, Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, with an unusual slurred upstroke of the widened QRS complex, the delta wave, that indicates the presence of a short circuit in the heart, also known as a bypass tract or accessory pathway, that can lead to a rapid, unstable rhythm. Additional abnormal rhythms responsible for sudden cardiac arrest include idiopathic ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. Marfan syndrome is an inherited condition that results in skeletal abnormalities, tall stature, long arms, legs, fingers, and toes, problems with vision, and heart problems that affect the aorta and the aortic and mitral valves, causing aortic dissection and rupture and sudden death. Abnormal origin of the coronary arteries is a common cause of sudden cardiac death in children and adolescents, often occurring without warning. Normally, the coronary arteries come out of their respective cusp, right from right and left from left, but coronary arteries can come out of the same coronary cusp, causing the other coronary artery to have to course between the aorta and pulmonary artery to get to the correct ventricle. This can squeeze the coronary artery, especially during exercise when the blood flow from the heart, the cardiac output, is increased. This results in a decrease in oxygen to the heart muscle, similar to a heart attack, and can cause an abnormal rhythm, leading to sudden cardiac arrest and death. Additional causes in youth include congenital heart disease, which is the most common birth defect, about 1 in 100 live births, either before or after surgical repairs. Shown here is a ventricular septal defect, or VSD, the typical hole in the heart, allowing blood to flow through the hole from the left ventricle to the right, causing overflow of blood to the lungs and overworking the ventricle to keep up with the body's needs. This can result in heart failure and pulmonary hypertension, high blood pressure in the lungs in the most severe cases. Additionally, a sudden cardiac arrest can result from inflammation of the heart muscle, often caused by a viral infection of the heart called myocarditis. Also, a sudden blow to the chest, commotio cordis, such as from a karate blow, a baseball, or hockey puck that hits the chest at a vulnerable time during the heartbeat can stop the heart. Now that we know the causes of sudden cardiac arrest, I'd like to discuss the warning signs and symptoms. It's hard to know when a sudden cardiac arrest will occur. There are warning signs and symptoms in around 50% of cases. These include fainting, chest pain, pressure, not sharp pain, palpitations including rapid, irregular, skipped, or hard heartbeats, or feeling that the heart is stopping and starting again, exercise intolerance or extreme fatigue, or shortness of breath with exercise, 
not related to asthma or reactive airway disease. Often young people don't recognize these warning signs or think that it is normal. Many times these events are simply written off and not investigated. But a sudden cardiac arrest can also happen out of the blue and a perfectly healthy child can collapse. You need to know your family history. Many of these conditions are inherited as previously noted and increase the risk of a sudden cardiac arrest. But family members are often unaware of their family history. Family history of a condition associated with sudden cardiac arrest, such as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy or long QT syndrome or Brugada syndrome or others is important and should prompt an evaluation of all family members. Family history of abnormalities or sudden death before 50 years of age is a major risk factor. Family history of an early sudden death, possibly one that has not been attributed to the heart, such as an early unexplained drowning or a motor vehicle accident, sudden infant death, or other early unexplained death is important to know as it could indicate the presence of an inherited condition associated with sudden cardiac arrest. Anyone with a family history of these conditions should have a cardiac evaluation and possible genetic testing. Be sure to talk to your family to get a full picture of your and your child's health history. Then consult your family doctor or pediatrician when needed. Risk factors include any of the warning signs or symptoms noted, especially when they are recurrent. Any symptoms should be checked by your child's doctor and or a pediatric cardiac specialist. If there is a positive family history for any sudden cardiac arrest associated condition or for early sudden cardiac death or associated symptoms, the risks are increased. The presence of a known abnormality in the heart rhythm, structure, or function is a significant risk factor. Use of drugs such as cocaine, other opiates, methamphetamine, or recreational drugs, inhalants, high doses of steroids for bodybuilding, or excessive amount of caffeine or stimulants can trigger a sudden cardiac arrest in a susceptible person. Further, a lightning strike or other electrical shock can lead to a cardiac arrest. Anyone can be at risk even if they appear to be healthy and have passed a physical exam or sports clearance. How can we mitigate risk factors? Those with a known abnormality in the heart rhythm, structure, or function and their relatives should be evaluated treated and followed periodically, complying with medications and other medical advice. Anyone can be at risk, even a seemingly healthy person who has no symptoms, no known family history, and no apparent risk factors. How can we improve outcomes after sudden cardiac arrest? Immediate CPR can double or triple a person's chance of survival, as can AED use. Bystander CPR rates are low in most communities, averaging 15 to 30 percent prior to EMS arrival, and current survival of out-of-hospital sudden cardiac arrest is only around 10 percent in both adults and children. Prompt response in a school with an AED and a cardiac emergency response plan could save more than 80 percent of sudden cardiac arrest victims. An increase in the current survival rate to only 20 percent would save 50,000 lives each year.